In today's video, I'd like to introduce you to Stanley. He is a super fun and soft and squishy baby blanket consisting of a garter stitch edge and then these really simple stockinette stripes sandwiched in between some garter stitch for the whole of the body. That makes him incredibly easy to knit because you all you have to think about is your bottom garter stitch border, your side borders, this middle panel that's a two row repeat and then a matching garter stitch border at the top. What more could you ask for? A fun knitting pattern with only two rows to remember for the bulk of the project. For this tutorial, you're going to need about 400 grams of double knit yarn, some four millimeter circular needles, about 80 to 100 centimeters is normally enough for a baby size blanket like this one. I like to knit all my blankets about 60 by 80 centimeters because I find that perfect for cots and prams and anything baby sized really. And then you're going to need two stitch markers, a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get knitting. When I knit a blanket like this one that has a built-in border, be that garter stitch or seed stitch or whatever stitch you're choosing to use, I like to deal with casting on the main body of the blanket first and then add on the stitches for the border either end. So for this particular blanket, you will need to cast on in a multiple of five plus two. So that means that you want to cast on multiples of five and then add two stitches. And then after you've done that, to make your border on either end, you need to add a total of 18 stitches. That makes eight stitches on either side of the blanket plus one stitch either end for selvage. If you want to make a 60 centimetre wide blanket like I have, then you will need to cast on 135 stitches. I'm just making a small sample today, so I'm going to cast on much less than that. But 135 is the golden number if you're wanting to make a blanket exactly like mine. I like to use the long tail cast on method for all of my blankets, but don't let that stop you from using a different method if there is a one that you prefer over the long tail. It's absolutely fine. It will still work. After you've cast on your stitches, the first part of the blanket that we need to work is that garter stitch border at the bottom. So the first 16 rows of your blanket are worked in exactly the same way, just to create that garter stitch border at the bottom. And we work those rows as follows. You want to knit every stitch until the final stitch. So when you have one stitch left on your left hand needles. Instead of knitting the final stitch, we are going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. So put quite simply, that means we want the working yarn at the front of our work. So as a continental knitter, I just pick it up with my right hand needle and then we are going to slip the stitch purlwise. So you want to put your right hand needle into the stitch from right to left. So as if to purl and then slip it from your left hand needle over onto your right hand needle and the last thing to do is just to make sure that you lift the working yarn to the front of the work so you haven't inadvertently created an additional stitch. So you want to repeat that row 15 more times until you've worked a total of 16 rows. After your 16th row, you should have a piece of knitting that looks a little bit like this, a nice garter stitch border with eight garter ridges facing you and this smooth edge from your cast on also facing you. So this is the right side of our work and your slipped stitches at the end will have created this really nice braided effect down the side. It just helps keep those sides really nice and neat. So as I said, for the main body of your blanket, it is a two row repeat, but we are going to refer to the first row we work of the main body as row one. That's our setup row. And then row two and three is our two row repeat. So at this point, you're going to want to grab two stitch markers because we will need those for our setup row. And then we'll get cracking with that two row repeat. Row one and every odd numbered row is a wrong side row. So the first row of the main part of our blanket is a wrong side row. And you want to start by knitting the first nine stitches. This makes up our side garter stitch border. After the nine stitches, you want to grab one of your stitch markers and just pop it on your right hand needle to mark where the border is. It just helps you when you are working out what part is the garter border and what part is that middle textured panel. 
Now, then you want to purl the next two stitches. And then you want to work knit three, purl two, until nine stitches before the end. And that should be after a purl two. So knit three, purl two, until nine stitches before the end of the row. And as I said, that should come after a purl two. When you've got nine stitches left on this left hand needle you want to get the second of your two stitch markers and just pop it onto the right hand needle and that will mark the opposite side of our garter stitch border then you want to knit the next eight stitches and then the final stitch just like we have been doing with our first rows we are going to slip purl wise with the yarn in front. And that's our setup row completed. All we were doing here was working the first row of our main body, but working it so that we can add in these stitch markers to keep track of where we are. Row two is the first of our two row repeats. So although I'm gonna call them row two and three, they are the two rows that you repeat until you are ready to work the top edge. Row two is really nice and easy. You want to knit every single stitch until your final stitch. You want to slip your markers as you go and you want to slip that final stitch purl wise with the yarn in front. Row three is the second of our two row repeat and you want to start by knitting the first nine stitches. At that point you should hit the stitch marker and you want to slip that over from your left needle to your right needle. Then purl the next two stitches and then work knit three, purl two and repeat those five stitches over and over until you hit your stitch marker. That should be after a purl two. So work knit three, purl two all the way along until you hit your next stitch marker. When you reach that second marker, you want to slip it over like you did with the first marker and you want to knit the next eight stitches. And then for the final stitch, instead of knitting it, you're going to slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. I know a two row repeat is really nice and super easy, but let's just recap it once more so that it's nice and ingrained in your brain before you go away and knit the rest of your body of your blanket. So to start row two, the first of your two row repeat, you want to knit the first nine stitches and that should take you to your first stitch marker. Slip the marker over and then knit across to the next marker. Knit every single stitch. When you reach the second marker, slip that one over as well and then knit the next eight stitches. With the final stitch, don't knit it. You want to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. So that's row two, the first of our two row repeat, and essentially you are knitting all the way across and slipping the markers as you go. Row three is the second of our two row repeat, and you want to start by knitting the first nine stitches. This should take you to your stitch marker, and you want to slip that over from your left needle to your right needle. Purl the next two stitches. And then work knit three, purl two, all the way across until you hit your second marker. And if you've counted correctly, you should hit that marker after a purl two. So you should be able to maintain that knit three, purl two pattern all the way until you hit your next marker. You shouldn't have any odds and ends. When you reach the next marker, you just want to slip it over from the left needle to the right and then knit the next eight stitches. For the final stitch of the row, slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. If we take a look at the front of our work, we can already see these nice little stockinette stripes starting to form. So you would now go away and repeat rows two and three as many times as you need until your project is about four to five centimeters than you want 
your final project to be. So in my case, I knit until I can measure 75 to 76 centimetres of knitted work. And then we move on to the garter stitch border on our top edge. So if you go away and knit until you're ready to start your border, then come back and I can talk you through how we finish off and add our border on and cast off. It's worth noting that you want to start your border after you have worked the second of your two row repeats. So after you've worked a row three, which is a wrong side row with the purls and the knit stitches. So you want to have your work facing you like this, ready to start your garter stitch edging. The final section of the blanket that you need to work is the top garter stitch border so that you have your garter stitch border at the bottom and then a matching one at the top. Your blanket is obviously going to be a lot larger than mine. I have just worked a very tiny sample, but you want to start your top edging when you are on a right side row. So you want your stockinette rows facing you. And working the garter stitch border is really nice and simple. Just like we did with our bottom border, we are going to knit every single row for 16 rows. When you knit this first row, you want to knit across and remove your stitch markers as you come across them because you don't need them anymore because we are just working garter stitch. So as you hit your marker, just remove it and pop it away and then carry on knitting every single stitch until you get to the next marker. Remove the second marker as you come to it. Then knit the next eight stitches until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle. And that final stitch you want to slip purlwise with your yarn in front to carry on that nice braided border up your side edge. And then you want to go away and knit 15 more rows so that you've worked a total of 16. And at that point you should just be about to start a right side row and you should have eight garter stitch ridges on this right side of your work. So if you want to go away and do that, knit every single stitch, slip that last stitch purl wise with the yarn in front until you've worked a total of 16 rows. So that's 15 more rows from this point. And then I'll show you how we cast off and finish everything off. Reaching the cast off row of any of my blankets always feels like a huge achievement for me because it symbolises the fact that after all those weeks or days of knitting that you've put in and every stitch that you've worked, you're now just 130, 140 stitches away from having a finished project that is off your needles and you are ready to get going with whatever you want to make next. Or you're ready to gift this piece of work that you've been working on for ages to somebody. It just always feels really good. You should reach your cast off row on a right side row. So you should have eight garter ridges up here and then we will be ready to cast off. I'm going to show you very briefly how to cast off knit wise, which is the way we're going to cast off. But I do have a more in depth video that I will link for you now and you can go ahead and watch that if you are not quite familiar with the knitted cast off. So the golden rule to the knitted cast off is that you never have more than two stitches on this right hand needle. So we start off by knitting the first two stitches and then popping our left needle into the first stitch we knitted and lift it over the second stitch. Knit one more and then lift the first stitch over the second stitch. So if you ever have more than two stitches on your needles, you've gone wrong because you should never have more than two stitches on this right hand needle. And you want to work your way along knitting one and then lifting one all the way until you have no more stitches left on your left hand needle and you just have one loop on your right hand needle. Once you're left with just this final loop on your right hand needle, you can break your yarn and then pull your needle up to make the stitch larger. Then get rid of your knitting needle, you won't need that anymore. And then you want to grab the loose tail and pop it through that large stitch and pull the tail up through it. Then you want to gently pull to tighten that stitch right up and then you would go ahead and sew in your ends in your preferred way. And hopefully by now you should have your very own blanket that looks just a little bit like my one. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if like me, you've caught the knitted baby blanket bug, then why not take a look at the video I've got linked on screen now? Because I really enjoyed knitting that and I think you will too. I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye!